Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering receptors from the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So first looking at the definition of a stimulus. So a stimulus is a de detectable change in the environment. So uh, this there's a number of changes that could happen. For example, a pressure change, or it could be a change in the light intensity. And receptors would only respond to a specific stimuli. So there are different receptors for different stimuli. For example, for light, you'll have the photoreceptors. For pressure changes, we could have baroreceptors. Uh, for chemical changes, we could have um, chemoreceptors. Um, and you need to know that stimulation of receptors can lead to generator potential. So this is basically when there would be a change uh, in the charges of membrane. So it could become more positive, it could become more negative. And a generator potential can cause what is called an action potential in the sensory neuron if the threshold is reached. Um, the action potential will become more clear when we go through the nervous system topic. Okay, so now looking at a specific type of receptor, which is called a Pacinian corpuscle. So this pre this is a pressure receptor, so it will detect uh, changes in pressure. That's, so the pressure is the stimulus. And this is uh, mainly found on the skin. And this is how a Pacinian corpuscle looks like. So you can see it has a sensory neuron there, uh, which can pass down the signals to the brain and brings about a response. And it also has what is called stretch mediated sodium ion channels. Now, this is really important. Uh, it becomes important later on. But you need to know that these lamellae, so these layers um, here, contain stretch mediated sodium ion channels. Okay, so now looking at what happens when there are pressure changes. Uh, so when uh, when the pressure on skin changes, the layers of the Pacinian corpuscle are distorted. So the layers on the Pacinian corpuscle will be distorted, and what happens is this will deform uh, the pre the pressure sensitive stretch mediated sodium ion channels. So looking at a diagram now, so these are the normal uh, Pacinian corpuscle cells. But what happens is when there is a pressure, and uh, the, the the this will deform and uh, the stretch mediated sodium ion channels. And as you can see, the shape has slightly changed now. And what this causes to do is it opens the sodium ions um, channels, and so the sodium ion ions can now flow in uh, to the membrane. So this could this would lead to the depolarization. Um, of the membrane so this will um, cause the sodium ion channels to go in and because sodium ion channels are positive and this causes an increase uh, in the membrane potential of in, inside the membrane which causes depolarization um, and this establishes a generator potential um, and again this is a change in the um, charge of the membrane and the greater the pressure there is, uh, the, the greater the generator potential will be. And if the generator potential reaches a threshold, so there's a limit, uh, if, it, if it's reached that, then the action potential uh, will be created, as you can see in the diagram, because there's been a large uh, distortion uh, in the shape uh, of the Pacinian corpuscle. Uh, it's caused a large depolarization and it's led to an action potential being formed. Okay, so now looking at the rods and cone cells. So uh, these cells respond to light. And because they respond to light, we call them photoreceptors. So they're receptors for light. Um, so rods contain a pigment called uh, rhodopsin. And um, the cone cells contain a pigment called iodopsin. And what happens is uh, when light comes through, uh, when it hits these pigments, it causes the breakdown of these pigments, leading to a generator, uh, generator potential, as we looked at before. Okay, so now just looking at the overall structure of the eye, you don't really need to know any, any parts of the eye, but it's helpful uh, for this topic, um, and particularly just the retina. So retina is that layer at the back of the eye. And you also just need to be aware of fovea. So fovea is 
located in the retina and this is where uh, most of the light uh, goes to so as you can see in this diagram says so the light is passing by um, it gets shined into that fovea so that little spot okay so now just looking at rods so rods allow uh, black and white vision uh, and they as we mentioned before they contain the pigment rhodopsin and the rod cells are distributed throughout the retina and they're not look but they aren't located in the fovea so looking at a diagram to show where they're located as you can see and that this is the fovea and there's no rods found there uh, but they're distributed elsewhere except the blind spot which we'll look at later on okay so you need to be aware that rods are very sensitive to light now this is because and the each each receptor cell so each rod cell is connected to several uh, bipolar neurons so as you can see in this diagram we have for example for this rod cell we have one two three rod cells uh, connected to this one uh, bipolar neuron um, and what this does is it causes summation of generator potential so it basically adds the general pot the generator potentials together uh, so that the threshold can be reached and so that the action potential uh, is established and this is called retinal convergence uh, but because of this there is low visual acuity uh, so because of because the several rods are connected to one bipolar neuron what this means is the brain can't distinguish uh, between uh, the, the 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 separate light sources so for example uh, if the light was coming there and it hit this uh, rod cell and if it if the light was coming from there it hit that rod cell then the brain would think they will be the same because it's at the end of the um, at the end of the rod cell they are being connected to this same bipolar neuron so looking at what this may mean so you can see here, see here that these two dots are different but because of this low visual accuracy and the brain might think that they are basically the same dots Okay, so now looking at the cone cell. So these these cone cells allow coloured vision. So where the rod cells allowed and uh, the black and white vision, these cone cells allow coloured vision. These cone cells have three receptors. So they have the red receptor, the green receptor, and the blue uh, receptors. And they have the photopigment iodopsin, as we have mentioned before. Uh, and they're mainly present in the fovea so again if you're looking at that diagram so as you can see we have the fovea here and they're present in large amounts whereas elsewhere there's very little uh, of the cone cells cones have high visual acuity uh, now this is because one cone receptor is only connected to one bipolar neuron so looking at this diagram so as you can see uh, one um, cone receptor is only connected to another uh, bipolar neuron uh, so as we saw in rod uh, cells uh, there was there were several uh, rod receptors connected to one bipolar neuron and that's why they had low visual acuity uh, now because of this the fact that only one receptor is connected to one bipolar neuron the brain is able to distinguish between the light sources and that's why it has high visual acuity however uh, the cone cells have a low sensitivity to light now this is because as as we mentioned before one cone receptor is only connected to one bipolar neuron so there's no summation of the generator potentials and there's no retinal convergence um, so it, it's harder uh, for the generator potentials to add up to make a action potential all right, so finally looking at the blind spot so you just need to be aware that blind spot is basically a spot in the retina where there's no photoreceptors found uh, so there will be no rods and cone cells so uh, looking at this diagram so you can see that blind spot is there and there are no rod and cone cells here so they can't detect light they can't be stimulated by light and that's why uh, when if there's lights if there's light going into blind spot then there will be no image formed thank you so much for watching this video if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to see more of these 
and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up. Thank you.